yo, you just got cry, 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 yeah, you just got cry, 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 yo, you just got cry. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Crocked lovers, this one is for you. Next to him, it's the bearded one, a top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Hey-o! hey yo! And last but not least, making the magic happen, super producer, J.D. Hello. There Whoa, he hello, is. Hello, hello. There he is. Here we are. Audio coming through nice and clear. <laughs> Crispy. Uh, we had a wedgie last night. Let's show it to you. Wedgie number 56, Brandon Miller in Charlotte from the corner. Now, Dante Exum has quite the reaction there, as you see. It wasn't really to do with the wedgie. He got called for a foul. Okay, so he was like, come on. I barely touched your arm. But Nobody 56. would be disappointed no. to see a wedgie. Look at that pace. That's a lot of wedgies. I know everybody's talking about the playoffs. All oh, the playoffs are coming, the playoffs are coming. The count for the most wedgies ever is coming down to the wire here. Very close. 58 is the amount of wedgies. So we're only two away. Mm. And we count into the playoffs because yeah. we just make it our own record. It's not just a regular season record like some people. Like some people. <laughs> Forget that. We're there. We're there. Yeah, we're getting it. We're getting 59 at least, and we're probably hitting 60 at some point during the postseason. Special year. Uh, lots of games on last night. A little bit later, we'll do the up-down report, but we had a lot of games. Uh, Chunky. Let's you sound start. tired. You just sound I am tired. tired. There's too much basketball. <laughs> There's too many games. And then you see the schedule tonight, you're thinking, oh, there'll probably only be three games on that. No, 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 no. There's like seven or eight games on There's a lot of back-to-back There's situations. There's back-to-backs. We unfortunately might have more injuries because of these back-to-backs. Oh. What a tease. Well, that's a, that's a what base, a segue. That's like a baseball talk. Right yeah, <laughs> because uh, let's start with the uh, you know the wild news from last night. Two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo exited the Bucks 104-93 win over the Celtics in the third quarter because of an injury to his left calf. Um, you can see it in the short clip here. He just crumples to the floor while running up after inbounding the ball. Total non-contact. Now, the Bucks announced that his injury was a left calf strain. We're hearing some good things, I guess, this morning about the severity of the injury. It's, you know, not an Achilles or anything like right. that. But, you know, an injury like this can still keep a guy out a week, two weeks, maybe even longer. We'll see, mm -hmm. you know, the grade of this sprain. Um, yeah, what did you think here of Giannis? And then, of course, we immediately go, what does this mean for the Bucks moving forward here? Yeah. Initially, I think, yeah, said Gumbo doesn't get an Achilles injury. That is great news for Yan Setacumpo not being out for a long period of time. And he's going to come back and play in the postseason. Like Achilles, the Greek warrior, Yan Setacumpo <laughs> is a Greek warrior. He will come back and play basketball. But that being said, it's going to bother him throughout the postseason. I start thinking, well, the 2021 playoffs, he hurt that knee. He came back after a week and they win the NBA Finals. Why can't they be great again? Well, that was just two weeks where they played in the finals. This is two months that we're talking about right. here. And we're talking about a team that was feeling good back then. So I think there's a lot of differences, a lot of negatives you can, we can get into. But I think this just isn't a good sign for the Bucks this postseason. Yeah, I mean, it's been a rough season for the Bucks in general and then for this to happen right as we're gearing up for playoff time. Luckily, the Bucks got a win, so they probably stay out of the play-in tournament, which was like a minor concern. Yeah. But Giannis will have another week to rest his uh, his leg there. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see how long he actually is out here. Like you're saying, Skeets, it could be a couple of weeks, could be a month, could be, who knows, depending on the grade of uh, the strain and the actual location of it. But the Bucks have had some pretty bad injury luck in the playoffs recently. I saw Frank Madden from Brew Hoop tweet that in 2020, Giannis missed the last one and a half games of the Heat series with an ankle injury. 2021, you mentioned it, he sprained his knee against the Hawks, missed the last two games of the Eastern Conference Finals, but Brooke Lopez put the team on his back there. 2022, Giannis was healthy, but no Chris Middleton after the first two games of the first round. Then last year, he missed half of game one, then games two and three in the Heat series that the Bucks went on to lose. That's pretty bad luck uh, yeah. over the course of four seasons there for especially a guy like Giannis, who's pretty reliable, pretty healthy in general. That being said, he has had some left leg problems this whole season. He's been yep. in and out of the lineup with hamstring concerns. I think there was some calf trouble earlier than that where he just didn't look very explosive at all, which is weird for Giannis. So if they were playing a little bit better, if uh, they had had a chance to click with him, Middleton, and Dame all in the lineup at the same time, 
maybe he gets a chance to rest this and he's not having to play in the last week of the season here with their seed completely locked in. That hasn't been the case for the Bucks, and it could come back to bite him uh, going into the playoffs. Yeah, that's the other part of this. Let's say he comes back uh, miraculously, I don't know, in a week for the start of the playoffs with this guy. Who knows? It's possible, I guess. Still, this team wasn't playing well and they weren't playing together. You said it, Trey. How many games have Middleton, Dame, and Giannis actually played in the same time over the last you know, 30 or 35 games. It's a handful from what I can remember. So they just don't have, obviously, uh, the experience just playing together. Now, maybe Dame can carry them early on if there's no Giannis in the first couple of games. Um, they've done it before when Giannis has missed time in some of these series. You know, some of those series, they did go on to win despite sure. missing their superstar. But different scenario as you started this whole conversation, Tass, than that team that eventually won the championship over the Suns where he missed that series, the end of the series against the Hawks. Yeah, and this team just feels old. Let's just put it simple as that. Yeah. It, it definitely feels that way. Patrick Beverly got the start yesterday, which is a good sign for Malik Beasley. And I say it's a good sign because it's happened before with Malik Beasley. I don't know why I didn't call this. I mean, when he was with the Los Angeles Lakers yesterday, they yanked him, or yesterday, last year, <laughs> they yanked him out of the starting lineup. Patrick Beverly, though, he was talking about on his podcast that he's got surgery coming that he's avoiding it to play in the postseason and everybody just in general is a little bit older I will say though the positive also for the Bucks, Chris Middleton fought through it in this game and was the reason in the fourth quarter that they came back and, and were, were able to hold on to it uh, as a win I should say because he was coming back from an injury where he was suffered the the mouth trauma literally mm -hmm. it's called mouth trauma mm -hmm. where he had to go see the dentist and he had somebody fall on his back as well but he came back and he is a key guy to this team so there's there's positives a new a new starting lineup i think with patrick beverly is a positive that there's an attitude with that defense and the fact that they beat the boston celtics twice this season and they lost to them twice so a 2-2 uh, season series not bad at all when you look at those losses by a, a total of six points combined so they can look at it and be like hey we can play this team but they also you know they could literally fall down the standings here as they have a back-to-back -to -back tonight you i don't know where they're going to finish who knows um they could finish third uh so there's there's lots of pauses but so many negatives i think for this bucks team. extremely weird game last night between the bucks and celtics combined for a record low two free throw attempts love it Two in the entire game. The Celtics became the first team in NBA history to not shoot a free throw, which is insane. That's a record they're just going to hold for the rest of time. No one will ever be able to beat them at that one. Uh, I saw Doc Rivers after the game say, uh, Adam Silver's got to be loving this, you know, to paraphrase. Said he'd be the happiest. 157 game time. My goodness, you can go to a game and still have dinner. Unbelievable. That's what Doc said. <laughs> but this is, Put it on a quote graph. I think the previous record was 11 combined free throws in a game for two teams, obviously. I think uh, it was maybe a Pacers Magic game where it was like 6 5. Two. <laughs> it was Giannis, right? He was the only one that went to the line. Oh, yeah. And I think he split a pair before the injury. So. Yeah, the Bucks. Weird. Are, <laughs> uh, the Celtics are a little bit in chill mode. Oh, they got absolutely. nothing to play for. No Porzingis last night. No Horford. And yes, chill mode, I think, is <laughs> yes. no fair fouls. to say. That's what <laughs> they're doing. Don't right get now. injured was their game plan, I think. And yeah. they successfully did that. Unfortunately, uh, the Bucks and Giannis didn't. Uh, I want to show you the East standings. Obviously, a ton more games. And we can talk about some of these Eastern Conference games. And then we'll move to the West. But you see it there. Boston. Clearly ahead of the Bucks. It was a big win, I guess, for Milwaukee in the end because you had the Knicks also winning. Mm -hmm. Now the Magic dropped a bad one, and then a, it's just jumbled there uh, from the Cavs all the way down to sort of the eighth seed, Miami Heat. It's still very, very close here in the final week. But uh, any any of those other results <laughs> uh, jump out to you from last night in the East, at least? Well, I, I will say just looking at the, the standings, we could have four teams finish 49 and 33. How fun will that be? <laughs> Two through five right now. They could finish 49 and 33. And I just I just keep thinking about Giannis. He's going to get 11 to 12 days off before the first game of round one. He could come back, but I'm still not buying it. So I, I keep trying to be positive about it, but Damian Lillard was asked about it by the Athletics' Eric Name. You got injured. Your calf was injured last yeah. year. How was that? I was freaking irritated is what yeah. he said. I came back after two weeks for and my soleus part of his calf <laughs> came back and I was I was just irritated all season so I think the other teams got to feel good even though the Knicks are playing without Julius Randle I mean they looked 
Well, we'll get we'll they get. They looked to, awesome last we'll, night. We have Jalen Brunson was on fire. I think he had forty five points on twenty four shots, mm-hmm. yeah. and he just couldn't miss. He was in complete control of the game uh, for New York. So getting a win there, they could easily move up into the two seed, and uh, that's probably good for them uh, if they finish in the two seed. Yeah. Just because I don't know. Uh, the Knicks have been playing awesome. They're a little bit healthier. Obviously, no Randall, but at least they know that going into the playoffs. And OG is back. That being said, uh, I'm a little concerned about the Knicks having an extra playoff gear. I've seen this with Tom Thibodeau teams before where everybody plays 40 minutes a game, so you can't play them more minutes when mm-hmm. it comes playoff time. Like, what more can Jalen Brunson do? He, he can't. He can't do more than what he did with 45 points. He was getting MVP chance in Chicago because that's where he's from. Literally in Chicago, he was getting MVP chance. He is a beast, but I do think this will be his best postseason ever. And I, that's saying a lot because last year he was awesome. He averaged almost 28 points per game. But he's making everybody dance. He had Clyde Frazier, the Knicks broadcaster. The Knicks broadcaster say yesterday while while watching this game said, folks, I was a seven-time All-NBA defense. You got to put him on his butt. I'm talking about <laughs> Jalen Brunson, yeah. a guy he broadcasts and say, you got to put that dude on his butt because he is so freaking good. It's really up to DiVincenzo and OG Ananobi and every single guy that he passes to to hit those threes because the doubles are coming. We broke them down. Hartenstein's going to get the ball. That floater is freaking on fire right now. <laughs> Those guys uh, are going to have to hit shots for Jalen Brunson to continue um, what he's doing because they're they're going to double. Everybody's going to double this guy. Do you think uh, Quint, uh, Quentin Grimes will help the Knicks in the playoffs? <laughs> 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 hey, hey man I've well, said things wrong on a podcast before yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure he, he is. not usually a guy that's not on the team but you're a hometown team I think you usually have the Bulls roster down Pat yeah that's true yeah. Uh, I think he's trying to talk about Miles McBride but uh, mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Grimes does stink <laughs> that's the other thing he stinks uh, he had one good season last year uh, I thought the Pacers had a nice win it started off ugly I was like ooh they cannot lose this one to the Raptors uh, but then they bounced back and scored 40 in the second quarter quarter 41 in the second quarter and ended up scoring 140 on a Raptors team that's uh ready for the draft lottery uh Hell I would yeah. say but oh we've the, been ready <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know Raptors fans are happy they chose a direction and the direction is to the draft lottery <sighs> it absolutely is yeah. oh my god they're just fingers crossed that goes higher than uh, maybe holding on to their pick there and not having it go to the Spurs as for they're the sitting guys like officially sitting guys no fines because they're not nationally televised games. But literally, <laughs> it's against the whole rule that the NBA made in the preseason. Emmanuel yeah. quickly is sitting now. For rest. Now? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, for the Knicks to uh, sort of catch the Bucks, you guys were talking about that. Going to be tough because the Bucks do have a head-to-head tiebreaker. So they are going to have to, like, make up two games on them for the Knicks to get uh, past Milwaukee there. But then, yeah, you guys said we're talking about that sort of 6-7-8 there with the results last night. Indiana holds a one-game lead over Philadelphia for the sixth spot. Miami barely behind them. Two of those three teams, again, Indiana, Philly, Miami, they feel like they're going to be playing in at least that 7-8 matchup, right? We know it's going to be Hawks-Bulls in 9-10. The Heat have three games left, all at home. They host the Mavericks tonight, Red Hot Dallas Mavericks, followed by two games against the Toronto Raptors. Hey, so those could be two wins. Yeah, those are nice. The Sixers also are at home the rest of the way. Huge game Friday against Orlando, and then a season finisher against Brooklyn. And then the Pacers have to go to Cleveland, who Indiana does trail by half a game, uh, or one and a half game, or something like that. Very close. Oh, yeah, it was half game for fifth in the East. And then they host the Hawks. So... Huge next games here, I'm saying. Like, for the Pacers with that Cleveland one, obviously for the Sixers with that Magic one, the Heat, you know, and, and the Dallas one. Like, that's not a, that's not the hottest team in the league right now. Uh, and we saw the Heat need a double overtime to beat the Hawks, too. That was the, an ugly overtime, yeah. both of them. Like, yeah. Jimmy Butler was <laughs> about as brutal as he could be. I thought he was terrible uh, in the fourth quarter overtime and then into the second overtime. They just got lucky that everybody on the court was exhausted by the time second overtime came. And Kyle, uh, sorry, Tyler Hero was actually able to score a couple of buckets. But Butler, like, he couldn't get by anybody. He was getting eaten alive by DeAndre Hunter on the defensive end, and then Hero couldn't get a touch for the longest time because Jajante Murray was all over him. So, yeah, I mean, the Heat, you're supposed to be scared of them going into the playoffs, <laughs> but their clutch offense is really, really bad, and it kind of comes down to, Jimmy, can you hit an impossible shot? Last night, he was not able uh, to hit impossible shots, so he did go 
10 for 13 from the free throw line, but I think he missed two in the fourth quarter yeah. as well, uh, unable to put the Hawks away, but they got the dub, and now the Bulls have, you don't get a magic number when you're playing for the 9 and 10 seed, <laughs> that's not what it's called, it, it needs something else, but a combination of a Bulls win and a Hawks loss, their number is two to clinch the ninth seed. It also shouldn't be called clinching. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, can't you clinch of... with a magic number when you're under 500 playing for the 910 seed. Yeah. What is that called? Yeah. It's not a tragic number. It's not like you're being eliminated no. from the playoffs. But it's not magical. It ain't magical. No, no. no. It's something. I yeah. saw I had John Hollinger looking up hotels in Chicago because he wanted to stay here in Atlanta for that 910 game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Looks like he's headed oh, to Illinois. That's tough. That's tough, Johnny. It's Orlando tragic for you, man. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, there was just a wild night. Wild that the Magic lost to the Houston Rockets, yeah. and they have two more games against the Milwaukee Bucks. So that should write the way for them going into the postseason. But I am interested in to see how teams in the East finish off, like the Miami Heat, who do not look right, like the Cleveland Cavaliers, where Donovan Mitchell does not look right coming back from that knee injury, sitting out of back-to-back, and just everything, everything from Donovan Mitchell just doesn't look absolutely right. So the Cavs, it's just I, I say it's all complicated, and four teams can finish at 49-33, but yeah, some teams are just playing better than the others, and that's for sure, and then you get a Throw a Joel Embiid in there. I mean, oh yeah, the yeah, Sixers hello. are playing the best right now. I mean, they're on a six-game win streak again. The Celtics have taken their foot off the gas, and rightfully so. But yeah, Sixers are trying to climb out of the play-in and maybe even host a, a first-round playoff series. It's still in the mix wow, when you look wild, at, when yeah. you look ahead of them. There, they're only a game and a half behind the Magic. They're only two games behind the Knicks, and there's still you know two or three games for most of these teams left. All right, let's pivot to the uh, to the West here. Some uh, also wild results last night. The Warriors made 26 three-pointers. Draymond Green hit five Mm -hmm. in the first half as they beat the Lakers. uh, No AD for LA, um, 134 to 120. And and this is big when, yeah, you're looking at the play-in and who's hosting. This is, this is the West version of uh, Hawks Bulls, but (laughs) yeah, but both (laughs) teams are good teams. Teams that have won championships (laughs) and are actually pretty good with superstar players. Yeah. And have been playing awesome in the second half of the season, but cannot get out of the ninth or 10th seed. I guess the Lakers did get up to eighth over the weekend for 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but weird one because LeBron James didn't show up until like an hour before the game started. Uh, I saw Dave McMenamin was tweeting all night like, LeBron's not here yet. LeBron just showed up. He still doesn't know if he's going to play, but he kind of had to play because Anthony Davis was unable to go because the guy keeps getting poked in the eye Mm -hmm. and it is causing problems for him. They don't want to say he's in the concussion protocol, but he's got headaches and he's got nausea. So who knows what's happening? But no AD meant that the Lakers, I thought, were completely overhelping in this one. They wanted to give up threes to Draymond Green, just like Draymond wanted to do it to Jalen Brown back in the day. Just like Jalen did to Draymond Green, Draymond made the Lakers pay five for five, like you said, Skeets, in the first half. At one point, Kevin Harlan screamed, Draymond Green has a flamethrower! Words I never thought I'd say! (laughs) (laughs) It's on a national broadcast. They're like, this guy is broke. (laughs) But he was hitting last night, and the three-pointers were just wide open uh, for Golden State because of the leaving people open and because anytime there was penetration, it was like five guys in the lane, we can't give up a layup, kick it out for an easy one. 35 of Golden State's attempts were considered open or wide open per Hmm. NBA.com's tracking data. They made 24 of those. That's 68.5%. On the night, they shot 63.5%, 26 for 41, which is the best field goal percentage from distance in a game in NBA history with a minimum of 40 attempts. You wow. thought the Warriors were done setting three-point yeah. records. I guess not. Yeah. yeah. That one caught me by surprise. I was like, whoa, <laughs> okay, that's yeah. a new one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to see Draymond Green hit threes, it's been a while. He hit five threes. The last time he did that was 2017. That's seven years ago. The 15th time in his career, though, he's made at least five threes. It's a little surprising. The most <laughs> the most you we all remember when we think about it is a playoff game, game seven of the 2016 finals. That was a good one. He had eight. Um, that being said, I think we are sort of over... We're just, we're just skipping one part of the Golden State Warriors and what they've been doing recently. Jonathan Kaminga is out of the starting lineup. Trace Jackson Davis and Draymond Green are the 5-4 with Andrew Wiggins sitting beside them. And Draymond Green loves doing that defensively. Loves, loves being able to take a little bit more of a risk because Trace Jackson Davis is so reliable behind him. And that's a great thing for the Golden State Warriors defensively because that's what they are where they're trying to find themselves and where they 
make their money, really. I, I know they're a great offensive team, but they need to be a great defensive team. And this starting lineup that is going to go in the playoffs that way with, with Kuminga coming off the bench, which everybody ridicules Steve Kerr about for a while, is different now with a rookie in Trey Jackson Davis who can play center. So they control their own destiny here for the ninth seed. They should be, at the very least, hosting a play-in tournament game against uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. But in a weird way, in, in, in some weird math, they can even climb up in the play-in tournament. But yeah. I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, let's move to the Clippers. They built a 31-point lead in the first quarter. I know you guys saw the score going around on Twitter last <laughs> night. It looked fake. Uh, and they held on to beat the Suns 105 to 92. Um, so we also had like the Wolves, and we'll get to Ant's big game, and the Nuggets. They won, and the Thunder won. So the Clippers are mathematically out of a top three seed in the West. They cannot get into that top three because those teams all won last night. But um, a big win still in terms of standings. It's probably even a, a worse loss, really, if we're being honest, for the Suns getting down huge and then just where they're sort of free-falling at the wrong time here in the Western Conference standings. But any thoughts on this game from the Clips? Uh, yeah, it's tough to be the Suns and play the Clips after an eclipse. <laughs> they were right. destined to lose this game. Uh, so get your glasses out. Yesterday we were talking about teams that the top seeds in the Western Conference want to avoid. You and I both said the Suns were scary. They're not. <laughs> They're not going to be able to put together seven games of reliable basketball. They didn't have – I mean, they had Beal out there. They had Booker. They had Durant. They should at least compete. And it was, this was a, a terrible loss for them. 50 points in the paint for the Clippers. They shot 57% on twos. Plus, they hit 12 threes, shooting about 46%. Russell Westbrook had a triple-double. He was rocking the baby. You got beat by a bench guy. This, yeah. is, this is terrible for the Suns. It was 37 to 6. At one point, the score looking like a football game score yeah. there, a big blowout. They did fight back, but uh, yeah. it's it's difficult to uh, to assess what this team will be over a playoff series. It's, it's totally true. It, it's difficult. They do have some fight. I mean, Devin Booker was a stinky game. Had just had a stinky game, and the fact that he only hit one shot from the floor, obviously. I am happy that the Clippers are playing the Dallas Mavericks in the playoffs. It's a four-five lock. That's what that's what's going to happen in the in the playoffs. Who the Suns will play is a mystery because they could literally land in the plan. Yeah. Um, and it looks like it looks like the Pelicans will hold on to that six seed, but TBD still on that. You're excited though about a Clips Mavs run it back, yeah. where everybody's convinced themselves the Dallas Mavericks and Luca uh, at least took one, if not two, of those series. But as Trey said uh, last week, it's like no, the Clippers actually did advance both times. Just Luca mm-hmm. had monster numbers and some memorable moments, but uh, LA yeah. does have Dallas's number. Completely different Dallas Mavericks team here for the most part. Yeah. Uh, especially since the All-Star break and the trade deadline, really, with the new pieces. But that should be good. That might be might be the most, well, there's going to be a lot of great matchups. So that's, that's definitely an intriguing one for five oh, yeah. Clips Mavs. Yeah. It feels like people are going to be fighting in that series. Yeah. Like, people are going to be uh, fighting for Luka to win a series against the LA Clippers. That's what they have to play for. He just can't like the fact that the Clippers own him. He can't like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, him and Kyrie playing together in the playoffs here for the first time is something, for sure. Um, that's going to be fun. And the Clippers are playing for something as well. This, Hopefully they're healthy because every single postseason, you went through the, the Bucks injuries every postseason. You could do the same for the right. Clippers, that's for sure. Yeah, Harden didn't play last night. Yeah. Kawhi didn't play last night. Yeah, yeah. they still got it done. Just they smoked hammered. Them. They smoked hammered them. the Suns. Uh, Anthony Edwards scored a career-high 51 points. He was letting everybody know he scored over 50 with the mm. five and the five and the O there. Yeah, for- five in the fist. Uh, as the Wolves rallied, I mean, they were down to the Washington Wizards, but came back and won pretty comfortably, 130 to 121. Uh I guess the nut dust bowl is still not technically over. I'm, I'm, I'm up two games. My Wizards are on your Pistons. If they had won last night, it was a wrap. But, mm. but uh, Anthony Edwards said, no, no, no. Let's have some stakes still when it comes to the nut dust bowl standings. Um, but yeah, Ant special game, and they are looking like they, you know, huge game tonight between the Wolves and the Nuggets. Huge game for that number one seed. And Ant was talking about it after, like, yeah. The stakes are there. This is an important one to have that number one seed. But any thoughts there, TK? Yeah, in Denver tonight. So advantage uh, Nuggets. Nuggets. And I think probably advantage Nuggets because they took care of business last night. And though the Wolves did eventually take care of business, a lot of effort going into beating the Wizards (laughs) before you got to go play the second night of a back-to-back in the biggest game of the season. But big shout-out to Anthony Edwards. 51 points. Doing it for 50 cent. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
50 Cent sitting courtside at a Timberwolves game. <laughs> you got up. That was weird to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That, has that ever been done? I don't think I've seen 50 Cent. In Minnesota? Now. Not a chance. Yeah, Lizzo wasn't remember. there. I didn't see her. She's been at games before, but he got up for Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards was doing it for that guy. There's yeah, no doubt. which I think is kind of surprising because if you're being generous with 50 Cent's career, his last big hit was AO Technology, a duet with Justin Timberlake from 2007 when Anthony Edwards was six years old. Wow. I don't wow. know. I don't know if he's I a big 50 Cent fan. That long ago? I mean, we're yeah. old, man. To me, his biggest hit recently was being at the Super Bowl last year. Like, that's a hit. That's, that's a good point. That's what he's known for, I would say. Yeah, he, he, that's, a, that's a great point, those 20-year-old songs he was doing. That being said, I do think Anthony Edwards never thought about this. He's got a little 50 cent in him. He's funny. He's yeah. generally good-natured despite being... A scary guy sometimes you know 50 cent has the background uh, of the streets being shot all those times they both <laughs> love to stir the pot but they've got a charismatic smile <sighs> so that nobody holds it against them and they're like oh doing it again Anthony Edwards maybe he's the 50 cent of the <laughs> NBA he was also in MJ mode last night I think he had at least three turnaround fadeaways in the post the last one even he was impressed with he was doing it to the sidelines I thought that was cool put the team on his back said we need to get this win yep. if we're staying in the mix here uh, you would have liked it to be a little bit easier, I think, if you are a Minnesota fan, but at least they did it. Yeah, we need to beat the Washington Wizards, um, which, yeah, it stinks for them that it comes down to the last second, basically. It comes down to the end of the game to beat the Washington Wizards because you got to go play Denver for the number one seed the next night. So that does stink. It was surprising uh, to see the Washington Wizards up 21 points and holding on to a double digit lead for a long time in this one. Not surprising to see Jordan Poole kind of chill out and lots of possessions. It's always hilarious. But uh, then Nuggets-Wolves game is going to be fun tonight. That's for sure. So let's quickly look at the Western Conference standings. Obviously, I said it's 1-2-3, Minnesota-Denver OKC because the Thunder get, did get a win there. Yeah, it's Clips-Mavs. We're looking like that 4-5. Pelicans holding on to the sixth spot. They're a game clear of the Suns. The Kings... They're down to eighth. It could still get worse because the Lakers are a half game back. And then the Warriors are in tenth, but they're a half game back of the Lakers. If they win outright, they're looking pretty good. But uh, I do like the, the top six teams in the Western Conference right now. They're all on a nice little winning streak, if you count two games as a streak. But <laughs> everybody's playing well right now, especially the Clippers and Mavericks having won four straight, both of those teams. So playing pretty solid basketball here right now. Any other thoughts on any of those games or any of the games last night? Again, 14 on... Uh, a lot of them with stakes. The people are saying that 50 Cent uh, does some sort of business with the Minnesota Timberwolves with oh, one of his uh, really things he does okay. <laughs> off the mic. That's I don't know so what he does. He, uh, he, he does a lot of businesses. That's for sure. He's a businessman at this point. <laughs> he's, he's done very well. He's not a rapper. Well. I mean, no, <laughs> we no. haven't heard a new 50 Cent song in 15 years, it sounds like. No. Uh, but I thought a bad loss for the Kings. They are Big struggling yeah. uh, right now. They were up 20 at halftime against OKC. This was a first half leads are not real kind of game because it ended up being a plus 60, 26 for OKC in the second half. And they just could not stop. Shea Gilgis Alexander in the clutch. I think he scored the last six points maybe uh, for OKC. He hit a crazy shot, grifted some free throws, and then just made a whole bunch of plays. The Kings could very easily drop into the bottom half of the play-in oh, bracket here because they play the Pelicans, they play the Suns, and then they have the Trailblazers' last game of the season. But Pels and Suns both playing for something, and those wins would actually mean something against a Kings team who they're all in the same stratosphere of the, uh, the standings here. So losing Kevin Herter, losing Malik Monk, it has turned out to be bad for the Kings. And then, like, recently they had that game against the Celtics where they had come back and were even leading, and then they lose, I think, was it Tillman, right? He had a big shot yeah, uh, it, for yeah. Boston to win it. It's like, yeah, there's like all these close, either they have big leads and they give them up or they just lose these close ones. They all matter here, and that's why the Kings have found themselves in the play-in, and their well, season yeah. is just sort of falling apart. Oh, the Sabonis double-double streak even came to an end. No! It's over, Shocking. man. It's over. So, yeah. What a run. Rough, rough right now. All right, well, unless you have any other thoughts on those games last night, let's pivot to the up-down report. Preparing your tubies. It's the up-down oh, report. Yeah, thumbs up or down. We'll start in Chicago where the Bulls served up a Shackton moment for the ages. Torrey Craig channeling his inner Tracy McGrady on the break. He tried to throw the ball to himself for a dunk off the backboard, but Andre Drummond thought the pass was for him or just really wanted the rebound. 
And yeah, they both collide in midair, don't score, blown possession, had Twitter going nuts. So the up down is uh, Drummond and Tory Craig delivering the low light of the season. Thumbs up if you believe that's true. Down if you've got something better. TK? I mean, this is this is two thumbs up for me. This is pure cinema. This is why we watch these late season basketball <laughs> games. I caught this live. I was so happy to see it. Uh, Tory Craig, man, give it up. Literally pass the ball. Not to yourself. Yeah. I'm watching this, and here was my thought process. Oh, nice steal. He's going to dish it to Kobe White for the easy yeah, layup. Yeah. Then I thought he's going to take it in himself for an easy dunk or a layup, which, you know, I think would be a selfish play considering there's a three on O fast break. Fair. Then I'm all, kind of with Andre Drummond here. When he threw it off the glass, I thought it was going to Drummond as well because why would Torrey Craig be throwing himself an alley-oop off the glass down nine in the first quarter? <laughs> Have you ever seen Torrey Craig do anything like this? That's why I said he was uh, channeling his inner Tracy McGrady. I'm like, why would you think that? Unbelievable. Uh, a lot of people were blaming Drummond, but it's completely on Tory Craig to be here. That being said, this was hilarious. <laughs> Breakfast table worthy. I'm like, girls, you've been awake five minutes. You need to see this. Uh, <laughs> and what did they think? Were they laughing oh, at Oh, they them? were dying laughing. Oh, yeah, yeah they loved it. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh, of course it's thumbs up. Okay. Uh, Tory Craig just wanted to have one of those before he has to retire, really. That's what it comes down to. He's 33 years old. He's hanging on. You know what? We're not playing for much. Let me just throw it off the backboard to myself. He's never done that in his NBA career. There's po no possible no way, way no. he's done that. It stinks uh, because Drummond has to do that. And then eventually he gets injured uh, in yeah, this game. Yeah, I guess he didn't get injured on that particular play, but yeah. soon after, right? Yeah. yeah. Next possession Next down, possession. stepped on a foot. Yeah. yeah, so if it was that one, that would have oh. been ridiculously bad. But... The internet is great for moments like that because they break down every little thing and you can break down every little thing in that one to see Kobe White's face watching from the three on O, wondering what the heck what are we is doing? Going on? He's having to stare at that thing. The internet was good last Yeah, there is a photo from the backboard camera and like Tori Craig yeah. <laughs> realizing that Drummond's <laughs> reaching for it behind him. It's an iconic photo. And yeah, you can zoom in on Kobe, oh, like you said, Taz. You can zoom on some of the Knicks players. Like, what is going on? Uh, pretty, oh, pretty boy. funny. Pretty funny. And like, I mean, yeah, I guess they're like I, they're in the play-in, and it's not yeah, like they they're moving up something. into the playoffs, but they are playing still, <laughs> technically, for home court advantage in the nine ten. So pretty wild to bust that out at this part. He said he's season. trying to get the crowd back into it. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it, it would have worked, man. <laughs> they would have went crazy if he throws that one down. I guess he didn't really know Andre Drummond was behind him, or just yeah. thought Drummond would just stop. I assume he didn't realize he was yeah. right behind him, <laughs> yeah. and then he might be thinking you're throwing it off the glass to him, stuff, man. to the big penguin. Oh, iconic stuff there. Well, sticking with the Bulls, Coach Billy Donovan said he has not had any contact with the University of Kentucky about its men's basketball coaching gig and reiterated his commitment to the Bulls prior to last night's game. Uh, maybe he's uh, thinking differently after that drum and Tory Craig play. But John Calipari's sudden departure after 15 seasons as coach over the weekend left Kentucky without a, without a head coach. And Donovan's name has been speculated as one of the Wildcats' top targets. So up or down, let's start again with you, Trey, because this is your team here. Up or down on Billy Donovan potentially leaving the Bulls for Kentucky after this season. I guess I would say like a three quarters up here because you can understand why Billy Donovan is a target for Kentucky. He's got two NCAA championships uh, with Florida, the previous team to go back to back. He's obviously got a Kentucky pedigree. He got his start coaching with Rick Pitino as an assistant for the Wildcats from 89 to 94. <laughs> There's maybe not a lot keeping him in Chicago as he has a, a 489 winning percentage uh, with the Bulls. And they're, you know, he had back to back championships in college, back to back play in appearances here in Chicago. Oh, woo! <laughs> Put the banner up. <laughs> Put it right up there next to the six titles. Back to back play in <laughs> appearances. They should do that. Not even getting out. Uh, but he did sign an extension before the 22 23 season. So before last season, yeah. there is not a ton of pressure in Chicago, as Darnell Mayberry uh, pointed out at the Athletic. He also said prior to this game that nobody's been in contact from Kentucky yet, but I guess the Calipari stuff is supposed to happen. I guess it was supposed to happen it, yesterday. Yeah, right? like he, he, he officially announced it on social media yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, so. Maybe it happens, but I think what would have to happen is that Kentucky overpays Billy Donovan. 
I think uh, Calipari at one point was like on a 10 year contract, 8.6 million every year. And Billy Donovan has basically been on like $6 million contracts since he's been coaching uh, with the Bulls. So maybe if Kentucky says, we'll give you six years, 60 million, 10, yeah, 10 million, <laughs> 10 million a season. Maybe that lures him away, but I think Billy Donovan will probably be the Bulls coach again next year. It's all about the dollars to me. If he wants to go get paid more, it sure seems like that's the thing because it's not all Billy's fault that this team has fallen apart here with Zach Levine out. If Lonzo Ball plays a couple of years ago, this whole team, this whole this whole thing could be different for Billy Donovan. And they started 5-14 and 14 this year. Mm. Obviously turned it around. So, yeah, it's whether Billy wants a new job, really, is what it comes down <laughs> to. It's, a, it's Billy's life. I have no idea what, what the status is. But as far as him in Chicago, I'm sure his team likes him. Yeah, they said in that ESPN article about this, uh, sources told ESPN Bulls are happy with the coaching job that Billy Donovan has done all season after the uh, rough start there at 5-14 and 14 <laughs> to uh, now potentially host a play-in game in the 9-10. The record is better. It's better, and they've had some big wins against good teams. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's pretty rare. I guess I'm down on this likely happening because pretty rare once a, once a college coach with a pedigree and maybe titles or whatever, Final Four appearances, comes to the NBA and gets one of those only 30 jobs in the world, very rare for them to then return and go back to a collegiate program, even if it was, you know, one esteemed as Kentucky. So, yeah. Billy, what do you want to do? you got two years left on this deal here, too, uh, like you were talking about, Trey. So well, not the, ha- probably the not Bulls happened. have had a coach go back to college. They did. Fred Hoiberg. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's yep. true. Um, how long did he coach the Bulls? It was like quickie. Two oh, or three seasons. Oh, was it as long as that? Yeah. Oh, wow, I thought it was quicker. Yeah. All right, we'll see what Billy decides to do. Uh, there's obviously a bunch of other names uh, in the running for that Kentucky job. Okay, moving on. According to The Athletic's Tim Kawakami, the Orlando Magic are reportedly interested in acquiring Clay Thompson this summer. Uh, the veteran sharpshooter is currently in the final months of his contract and will become an unrestricted free agent once the season ends. So up or down, we'll spin it this way, up or down on the Magic, again, reportedly eyeing Clay Thompson in free agency. And I would add to that, like being aggressive in trying to get Clay Thompson from the Warriors in free agency. I'll go up on that. This is exactly the type of player that they need. A guy who is willing and ready and welcome to shoot every three he gets. The Orlando Magic are last in the NBA in terms of threes made per game. They're below average in the percentage that they make. They need a three-point shooter. Yeah. Uh, Clay Thompson, I know, is getting up there in age and isn't incredible defensively. It's just not what he does anymore. He's still solid. And you put that together with a really, really, really good defensive team, that means he'll be even better. I I think that's just a a good guy to go get because you just want a guy who can shoot. And the Golden State Warriors and their future, I am not convinced is is going to be the same big three going forward same same thing that they're going to roll back again even though they look a lot better now and i mentioned trace jackson davis at the five with kuminga at the three if he takes over for, for wiggins it looks like the best that they've been all season but i don't know if they roll back draymond green again chris paul's that that would mean sorry that draymond green would have to be dealt because he is under contract chris paul's money is not guaranteed next year for 30 million dollars maybe they change it up a little bit. It's possible. Mm-hmm. It is possible. Do they want to go back again with the same thing? I'm not 100% convinced. Uh, so I, I think there's there's two sides to it. I think it it makes sense for the Magic, and it may make sense for the Golden State Warriors. What do you think? Yeah, I think two sides to it, which is why I'm sideways, because I think the Magic should completely overpay Klay Thompson to try and get him for all the reasons Tass said. He's a great shooter. He's shooting 41% from three in the second half of the season here. He's still obviously a scary shooter as well. And he doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands, which is going to be the case playing in the for the Magic, where uh, big rig Paolo Banquero will be handling the ball a whole bunch. Franz Wagner will be handling the ball a whole bunch. You don't necessarily need your guard to be a creator, but you do absolutely need him to shoot. And you need his veteranship, I think, would help. He would be like bringing in Joe Ingles this season for the Magic, except for Clay is still better than Joe Ingles is at this point in their careers. And I think the Magic would completely be able to cover up Clay's defensive weaknesses because everybody else on the court plays really solid defense and Clay at least buys in. He just doesn't have the lateral quickness yep. he used to have. That being said, I think it's more likely he sticks with the Warriors because they just seem to be running it back. Steph Curry's got two years left on his contract. Draymond Green's got two years left on his contract. Then uh, uh, 
player option for the third season after that. Wiggins has two years left on his contract and then a player option after that. So my guess is that Clay Thompson is getting a two-year contract from the Warriors with a slight pay cut to stay around. Before the, yeah. st- before the start of the season, I think Shams reported that the Warriors offered Clay a two-year $48 million contract extension. So maybe that's the starting point, TK. And, and yeah, how much more are they willing to offer? Do they get scared of a number? Do the do the magic come in way over the top with their offer? So it was forty eight for two years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was at the start of the season, and then Clay looked pretty bad for a while. Has got it going recently. The fact that he's even played this many games is pretty astonishing for a guy with two years of like really bad injuries. Yeah. But that's what, that's what he said is the thing he's most pride about is that he's coming out and playing and he's shooting it ridiculously well. So for twenty four million, I know it sounds like a lot of money. But in the NBA, it's not a lot of money, and it's not a lot of money for what he's coming from. He's $43 million this year. Yeah. And yeah. he's an icon. I mean, he's all a famer. He is what the Golden State Warriors will probably pay for. If they get for 24 I think that they would be extremely happy. But Joe Lacob has said that the Warriors want to get all the way out of the luxury tax this summer, which is possible, but you got to get creative or be disciplined with a clay contract. You can't go crazy with that payment. Obviously, the Chris Paul equation of it all that he would probably be likely gone. Um, that's what he said. You know, maybe he changes his tune if they suddenly make another, you know, run here or get out of the plane and win in first round or two. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you guys on the Magic being the team that should be really aggressive in trying to get him on a short term deal. I think that's the important part. I saw Sam Quinn at CBS Sports. He noted that the Magic are basically in a use it or lose it phase of having cap space because. Franz Wagner and Suggs become extension eligible this offseason, but those deals don't kick in until 25-26. So that gives you this 24 offseason to sort of spend a little bit of that cap space for a, a guy like him that could help, obviously, with your shooting, just a guy that's been through a million playoff series as they try and take a next level. Um, as long as it's, we're not talking, you know, and I don't think we are here, like three, four type deal uh, years for, for Clay. If it's just more money than two for 48, they could do it. And it's not like going to kill their future and some of their uh, their building blocks moving forward. So we'll see. We'll see. Final one here. We addressed it briefly on yesterday's show, but let's show it to you now. During the total eclipse on Monday, Nike unveiled a new logo for the alien Victor <laughs> Wembenyama design. You see it there. It's a, it's an alien inside a basketball. Uh, I'm convinced those are two little feet, but maybe not. And uh, we got the Nike checks there as well on the side. Up or down, gentlemen, on Nike's new Wemby Alien logo. We like it. We hate it. Indifferent. I like it. Yeah, Yeah, I like it. I think this is maybe the best new NBA logo since Derrick Rose got a logo from Mm. Adidas. That was that one was sick. That one like came out like whoa, look at that! It's (laughs) it's a rose with a one in the middle of it. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, Uh. whoa! It's an alien in a basketball. (laughs) Put it on an airbrush T-shirt, but it's not his number or his name just like smashed together. Yeah, it's not a VW like (laughs) like a Volkswagen out there. (laughs) Exactly right. They're like, oh, Van Wilder scooped us with Ryan Reynolds wearing that back. Backwards hat, but yeah, this looks nice. Um, Alien is going to stick as a nickname for Victor yeah, Wembanyama. Really well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tass, you you agree? You like it? Yes, I do like it, and I know that people are going to basically design his face into that logo. They're going to <laughs> meld Wembanyama's face into that logo. It's going to happen a lot. They're going to call him the Alien over and over and over again. I get that. He does things differently. He is a huge. He will pull every single move on a basketball floor that a guard would, not a seven foot four, seven foot five guy, as we saw yesterday with oh, the sham yeah, god. Yeah, we've got that. Him <laughs> dropping the sham god into the spin and he then keeps the doing that. go-go gadget arm layup. Like this he is loves the in traffic in the paint, basically. Yeah, I mean all season long, every game now it's whoa. Never seen that from a guy that big. Whoa, never seen that box score from a guy that big. You know, it's. It's wild. The, the amount of things they can do with the alien sort of motif, too. Like, you, I don't know. You, you have a lot of fun with the commercials and obviously the advertising and stuff like that. They should it do, works. like, uh, guerrilla marketing where they go out and literally do crop circles with the big alien thing. They should have done that before this. Yeah. Oh, man, that would have been really... They just start appearing. <laughs> what, is, yeah. what is that? <laughs> what does it mean? Are those Nike checks? Do you think it's for Wembenyama? <laughs> Aliens wear Nikes? What? <laughs> Heaven's Gate was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, thumbs man. up or thumbs down on uh, on the Wemby logo. Any other thoughts? Well, on I, I, they're going to also put an alien on the basketball floor. Like they, I mean, 
every single person who is going to create anything using basketball play will make him an alien. What I mean, mean, yesterday, yesterday the Grizzlies were on a three on one and Weminyama was just in the middle. Right. And they should literally go to the rim. They should shoot yeah. over him. And they decide, terrified. no way we're doing that. We're going for a three point shot. Like someone will just make that Wemby an alien. You know, they are. We're going to have there's going to be so many aliens on a basketball floor. Why would you want to go near an alien? Well, because he's freaking awesome. <laughs> so that makes sense. There's just yeah. The logo will be an alien, will be Wemby. <laughs> There's just going to be a lot happening. The, the dude, now the fourth player with 1,000 points, 250 assists, and 250 blocks in a season, joining Kareem, David Robinson, and Akeem. Andrew Lopez uh, tweeted that. I mean, he is just like, he's just special, man. We said before that uh, he does remind me of the movie Signs when we get that video footage from like mm. the, uh, the Mexican birthday party. You remember that? Like down the hall, oh, well, yeah, and the alien that. goes through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got the same legit body shape as that alien. So yeah. maybe they'll just remake signs okay. and just place him in it yeah. as the actual alien. You're right about the then walk. Phoenix will have to take a baseball bat to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he's not allergic to water. So yeah, I was gonna say he can beat him with water. <laughs> wow. Have we ever seen him drink? <laughs> we figured it out how to stop him. All right, let's see, uh, hear from everybody watching live, listening later. Thumbs up or thumbs down on all four of those. Talking about the Bulls low light, Billy Donovan possibly coaching Kentucky, uh, Clay Thompson maybe aggressively being pursued by the Magic, and then Weminyama's logo. Before we go, tweet of the night. Mm, tweet of the night. Wow. Twit- uh. Wow, I have a doozy for you guys. This is a story. Tweet of the night. Somebody paid for the blue check for this one because there's a lot of characters, but... <laughs> Uh, it's sort of funny. Okay, it's from at Jake Ann Ball. An average man gets stuck in a time loop, and the only way to escape is to beat LeBron James at basketball in a one-on-one game to 11 points. Ones and twos, make it, take it. How long until he gets out? Now, the average man has never played basketball. Each time he loses, the loop resets, and LeBron will not remember any of the previous games. But... The average man will, so in theory, could get better. Cheating is utterly impossible. He will not age or die. He will not go insane. And you can play as many times, or he will play as many times as needed to win. Mm -hmm. And then the question on this is, how many times does he need to play to win and escape the time loop? Win? You're asking... How many times does yes. he have to play to win? Beat I, was LeBron thinking, James. I was thinking, how many times does he have to play to score once? Score once, yeah. yeah. He's never going to win. Never? Especially, Infinity? Infinity. Wow. Especially, I think <laughs> the negative is LeBron will never remember a previous game, so he's going to play to win. You're like, right, he, right. Like, he might screw with the guy who can't play basketball. There, there was a follow-up <laughs> question about, like, yeah, does LeBron at any point, like, just, like, not care? Yeah. Give up, but the the thinking was no, that's not true. He's always giving a damn enough to play mm. at his level of LeBron James. Infinity level for me. Wow. I don't think he'll ever win. I, he's he's LeBron's gonna care, I assume. So this guy's not going to win. Yeah, but he's going to be yeah. this average man. <laughs> My good friend, average man, will be learning from the best possible teacher. Every game he plays is against LeBron James. Who better to learn from? Okay. They beat the aliens in Edge of Tomorrow, eventually. Tom Cruise eventually <laughs> right. hacks the system and figures out the problem. So LeBron, he's been one of the best basketball players <laughs> in the world since 2000, basically, right? Like, I mean, he was a, still a high schooler back then, but he was one of the best basketball players on earth. He's played 68,172 minutes in the NBA between uh, the playoffs and the regular season. He played in high school. He played international com petitions and he's obviously practiced a lot so i'm <laughs> estimating lebron has played at least a hundred thousand minutes of basketball sure if these games take five minutes i think it takes a minimum of twenty thousand games until you're as good as lebron james <laughs> I, I don't think so i don't think he's gonna improve like, like tom cruise can learn how to use a computer this guy especially because i'm influenced by this photo or this man is half of lebron's size he literally looks well, that, like he's well, that's chris hardwick. okay he's not chris yeah it's chris hardwick I, okay half is an exaggeration chris hardwick i would say is 510 or something i'm guessing Probably, yeah that's that looks like he's his hair is puffed a little bit but i assume that's about a foot difference between lebron james like tom cruise with your comparison there a guy can learn how to play a computer 
this guy is not going to be my apologies to Chris Hardwick, <laughs> but he's not going to learn how to be anywhere close to half as good as LeBron James. I don't think. You know yeah, what I mean? the the issue with the learning part is it's not like an average man gets to show up an hour before. I guess LeBron plays him so he could work on his game, work on his handles. Like he'd have to add all that within the game of playing LeBron James one on one, which is going to be much more difficult. True, <laughs> I agree on that. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, really, it's just like how many times is it going to take for this average guy to, I think, just hit six twos just like bombs from like yeah yeah bombs. 35 feet where lebron is not even coming out to check him yet why wouldn't he you know, well, why wouldn't he is a thing yeah well right after he hits two or three you think <laughs> yeah. lebron's gonna <laughs> press up on him yeah. make him drive yeah. the guy yeah. may not be able to drive you would learn that in about game fifteen thousand. you'd be like okay when he steps out on me i know how to get around him now yeah a little bit and lebron yeah. blocks you at the rim uh oh <laughs> <laughs> we're going back <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, I guess this was pulled from um, this idea, the same idea with like a, a chess master and how many times it would take an average chess player to eventually beat a chess master. But that, I mean, that one you can almost convince yourself more because you're removing the physical part of it. It's all mental and it's all learning and you're picking up on what that chess master may do and mm -hmm. you're going to adapt in theory. But this, this is a whole other level with... Uh, foot and a half in difference in height, uh, 150 pounds, whatever it is, like if you're an average guy. But Trey believes that one day, average man wins. <laughs> one day, average man wins. Oh, man. <laughs> you disagree? Well, I, I do. I hope, I hope Twitter improves over 20,000 conversations between one person and another person. I hope it gets better. Because well, I, I think we've seen peak. It's definitely getting worse. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we've seen peak Twitter. It was a great time. Yeah. It was a great time to be there. A long time ago. I was just checking how many tweets I had. How many tweets do you have? Do you know off the top of your head? I've no. got over 100,000. Yeah, where the hell do you find that? I thought it was right there, but it's not. There's a lot of things there on, on anyway, the tweets Anyway, my point now. is it's, getting, it's, it's going the opposite direction. It's just getting worse. Wow. I'm actually going. Now I'm in hell when I'm on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> just like Oof. this average man. All right, great stuff there. Thank you to at Jake and Paul. Jake and Ball, not Jake Paul. Jake and Ball <laughs> for the tweet night. Okay, make it Jake Paul. <laughs> uh, the average man. <laughs> <laughs> How many times would it take for Jake Paul to beat LeBron James? He's an athlete. <laughs> does, does he have access to prime energy drink <laughs> yes the court is branded prime oh, so he has that, that takes it down a little for me then <laughs> no, okay okay oh did you say prime prime yeah logan paul is, yeah, a, a, is a prime hydration guy <laughs> yeah that's with was... the toronto raptors oh with the toronto raptors that's yeah it. with the toronto raptors yeah that's right that's right i mean he's also so he has many... prime in the and you know, we didn't tell you when we were talking wrestlemania yesterday oh. prime is now on the mat Oh, and there's prime. Uh, there's a hydration station that's always gets knocked over in every match. Yep, and a guy, <laughs> and then a mascot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah anyway. A lot of prime. Okay, who would win in a one-on-one -on -one game between Chris Hardwick and Tom Cruise? Hmm. I think Chris Hardwick has the size on Cruise. Yeah, but Cruise is a better athlete and Ooh. has great running fitness. <laughs> And and seems great, has great he's point. he's like a little more psycho, yeah. like in a good way I for agree. a game of one on one. <laughs> eventually, sixty one years of age. I don't want to question that. Wow, wow. I, sh I shouldn't. Tough I shouldn't question that, that because wow. yeah, he looks great. He's just a Mission Impossible. Give me Cruz. I mean, yeah, give me, Cruz. Give me Cruz. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> me too. <laughs> See, like uh, we've got AI now. Can't we just like plug that in? And say, hey, show me, hey, AI, make me a game, one on one, make me a game. Chris Hardwick <laughs> versus Tom Cruise, and we should have, we should have that on tomorrow's show. Is my yeah, point. That's what Tom movies Cruise, are going to be. He, yeah, Tom Cruise would never do that. He insists on doing his own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He hates AI. That's what the new Mission Impossible was all about, actually. Dead reckoning. Well, yeah, but after Tom Cruise beats Chris Hardwick in one on one, check check to see who's under the mask. Because it's probably LeBron James. <laughs> Because that's all he's doing in that movie, too. I finally did watch it. Very disappointed. <laughs> oh, really? I was disappointed. And I uh, love the Mission Impossible series. Mm. I just thought it was... I don't know. I, I didn't like it as much as it. the previous one, which is Ghost either Rose Na Rogue Nation and Ghost Protocol, yeah. which I thought that were both yeah, better. Yeah, but I, I loved um, how many references to first Mission Impossible there were in Dead Reckoning. Yeah, yeah. And this is a part one, yeah. so it ends a little mm -hmm. odd, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ending odd, just like this podcast mm -hmm. is. Uh, let's call it there. Incredibly lots of games on still tonight. Back to backs. Knock on wood that nobody else gets hurt. We'll wait to see the severity of Giannis's injury and what impact that has on the Eastern Conference playoffs. But we'll be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern to break it all down. Get your questions in, nodunksattheathletic.com. Drop them in the YouTube comments. Tweet them in, at nodunksinc. 
And uh, we'll also have uh, Survivor on tonight, so we'll be doing no buffs tomorrow as well. Two shows tomorrow. Till then, Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, Tom Cruise, in whatever he did, he had Soleus. I just want to make a Soleus <laughs> connection, you know. <laughs> He had soul. He had soul. He had soul. He had a soul. That's the connection. Yeah, that's the connection. Why not? He was great. He was. He had the Top Gun. He had it all, man. You think Tom Cruise has soul though? Well, he has to. <laughs> well, technically, I, I thought he was that. declared clear with regards to soul. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired today, man. Brace the day, people. <laughs>